Okay, Beshem Hashem Nasem and Asseach, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to come and learn with you. Bezat Hashem. This week's parasha is the parashat Balak. It's a very interesting parasha that this king of Moab right, is all worried about uh, uh, Yehudim Jews coming to his land, right, rightfully so. So he goes and he hires a big sorcerer, Bil'am who also was the prophet of the other nations, you know. And this prophet, Bil'am, had a secret weapon, an atomic weapon, but that knew when is the moment of Hashem's anger, right, as a millisecond of the day that, that Hashem judges the whole world. And he wanted to put a curse against Amisa, Jewish nation. So on that day, our, our rabbis teach us that Hashem did not become angry, not angry, I mean, we cannot say angry, Hashem didn't judge us, so he was unsuccessful. So our rabbis teach us from the encounter and the words that uh, this Bil'am, this uh, prophet, so-called prophet of the Goim, who was a very wicked person, by the way, we learn a lot of lessons. One of the things that we always refer to is the, um, the Pasuk that is written in this week's parasha, Ma tobo ahalecha mishkenotecha Israel. That how beautiful are the tents of Yaakov, the places of dwelling of Israel. So there is a wonderful sefer, it's called Netivot Shalom. Explains what is this whole pasuk? This guy came, said, Oh, it's beautiful homes, beautiful tents. Is that what is what is the big deal about that? So our rabbis teach us now. There is a hidden lesson here. He saw the modesty of Jewish nation, that their tents did not open facing each other. So in the tent, uh, no, in a tent has the opening. So when the opening is uh, in the opening of the other, so you can see the other person's home and uh, the wife and the children and they might be relaxing, they might be sleeping and that wouldn't be proper, that wouldn't be modest. So from here, one of the big rabbis explained that this is the lesson of modesty. That if a Jew is modest, then Shekhinah, then Hashem's presence, right? God's uh, uh, glory resides in his home. So from here, the Mequbalim, those who know Kabbalah, they remind us how careful uh, one needs to be, even in the, in the four walls of his home, even in his residence to be modest, right? To dress modestly, ah, uh, I need to change. I need to, you know, uh, uh, be a certain time. Uh, so, person needs to go in the closet or needs to go in the, you know, in the places that are not in, in front of, obviously not in front of everyone. And even in a secluded place, there's nobody in the room. I wanna change my clothing in, the, in my bedroom. Our rabbis teach us, that is not the best thing to do, right? Because Hashem's presence is everywhere and you want Hashem's Shekhinah to continuously dwell in your place. So from here our Rabbi teach us how good it is that we, uh, Am Israel, we have the values of senyut modesty. It's not only senyut of clothing, it's senyut of speech. Certain words should never be said. Certain, you know, things, uh, uh, slogans or name callings, right? They call it like uh, this person, you know, that person is, is tall. They call him, you know, Mr. Derachmimuni. Kutule, right? You are the Kutule means, what's the word? You are Shodi. Shodi, right? Obviously, this is not senu, this is not proper. A person needs to always think, right? Shifti bevet Hashem, right? That I'm, I'm in the house of Hashem. Hashem is uh, naked, uh, that Hashem is in front of me, right? And this is the fact. When we say Baracha, we say Baruch Ata, that you are blessed. Hashem is right in front of us. And if we go with this, uh, you know, understanding, then no negative power can come and harm us. Bil'am wanted to remove Shekhinah, he wanted to remove Hashem's presence for, from our homes, right? So Hashem didn't allow him, right? 
So it's very important that in one's home, when a person comes from a hard work, you know, and then you guys have the real challenge, right? You, you work here and then you go home. You come home, before you go home, and there was a very big rabbi who used to do this. Look in the mirror, make sure that your face is, is you know, a smiley, right? you're happy, leave all the hard work that you had, you know, all the dealing with this guy, that guy coming to your office, you know, making problems, right? right? Leave that behind and then go home greeting your wife, right? How are you, honey? Right? Uh, how are you, Azizam? Whatever you say, you know, right? And then that ensures the Shekhinah in one's home. Obviously, we have our own expectations, but if we go with expectations, right, at home, Right? and we demanding so much, then that's not the real love. Because the real love is when you give. When you give, you, you take. Right? And one more lesson I want to share from next six parasha. Also, also, Amen. So you got recorded. <laughs> Right. So our rabbis teach us, right. uh, that's okay. Right. Uh, you know, Mishkenetech is two, two places, Kenisa and places that the Beit Midrash. Bilam wanted to destroy these two places. Why? Because it's very essential for the Jewish nation to constantly go to Beit HaKeneset, to Shul, Kenisa, in order to continue being Jew, we need to have the Jewish values. And bet, bet, Bidrash, you go learn Torah. May Hashem help us that wherever we are, we always go to synagogue. We always go to Bet Midrash, right? Not just few times a week, right? Every day, hopefully, right? Especially learning Torah, this is what will secure our children and our emunah and bitachon and ultimately will bless us with all the blessings when Omar, Amen. Amen.